My name is Judy Litton. I've been married for 31 years, and yes, we love our married life. We enjoy life. It's wonderful. My name is Gary B. Litton. I've been married to my lovely wife, Judy, for 31 years, and I really enjoy being married. My mother made me a ward of the government as soon as I was born. I lived with her in was at her orphanage for the first six years, six and a half years of my life. And then at seven years, I was taken to the provincial training school. They took me there because my eye was so crossed in that you couldn't see the color of my eyeball. And I was a little freak and I was a little freaky because I looked different and acted different because I could hardly see with my other eye. Therefore, I was deemed retarded because I couldn't see and I was half blind. During the day, I suppose for the first year I played, but then after that, after I guess grade nine, or at the age of nine, pardon me, at the age of nine we were made to deliver trays to the different wards, scrub floors, feed people. We had to feed people, especially when we were, when I, when we were punished on different wards for uh, misbehaving. Um, we had to take the people into the into the dining room, tie them to the benches because they had sleeves on with ties on the back. We had to tie them to the benches and feed them breakfast, dinner and supper. My mother gave me up at birth and she wanted no part of me. Uh, my eye was badly crossed. That was against me. And that was a big black mark in my life because it looked like I had a problem. And I didn't really. A lot of people are born with crossed eyes. People wondered why we didn't have children. like. You know, you would have been a good mother, you would have made a wonderful mother. Uh, you know, what's with, your, what's with you? You don't have children, like everybody else is having children all around us. And yeah, here we are. There were four people in the room and they asked me how, what day it was, what month it was, and how old I was. And I'm deemed clear, past clear for sterilization. I don't think so. That wasn't fair to any one of us, especially when I knew it was happening. I knew it was happening because I asked questions and found out what was happening. We sat on the grass with paper and a pencil and she drew the picture of a circle and two fallopian tubes on that circle, in that circle, and she put two, cro two lines across each of the fallopian tubes and she said they're cut and tied, simply cut and tied, that's it, that's how you're sterilized. That's not true because I was slashed like hell. When uh, I went to have corrective surgery, the doctor, Dr. Traff, said to me that you looked like hell. He said, or it looked like hell, like dog meat. You were slashed like hell in pieces. He said, I couldn't even see what was happening in there. He said there was nothing there. I knew it was a crime because I was dating her happily and I, I got to know her very well as a human being, one to one, and I knew it was a crime, like I said. So it didn't upset me because uh, I've always been a fighter when it comes to uh, what people think of me or how they regard me. So I knew that uh, I was deeply in love with her at one point and that fact of her being sterilized didn't influence my wanting to marry her. I had no choice. I laid there as each person in the, other, in the room went in for their surgeries, came out, I thought, Oh God, I'm next. I counted all the spots in the ceiling. I thought, what am I going to do? I remember the day I was talking to um, Anne. I won't use her last name. And I said, oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do. This, it was just like my life had ended. I'd gone to hell and was never going to come back. I had nothing to live for. Why should I live? Is it worth living? Is life worth living? My life was over. I had nothing to look forward to. I couldn't have children. I couldn't have a happy life, a normal life. What am I going to do? I was angry, but if I carry that anger, it's going to damage me, so I don't carry that anger. I just ask the Lord to help me to forgive people that were uh, against me throughout my life. Yes, I have been angry about what happened to Judy, and I think that's normal. The fact that I'm so close to Judy. She's my best friend. She knows that I'll always stay with her no matter what happens. 
but I've lost that anger, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because like Judy says, what's the point of carrying the anger? It does you no good. Mm -hmm. Bitterness, sex, life, love releases it. That's right. That's a saying I came across years and years ago, and I've tried to apply that into my life. I won't be able to enjoy the children I would have had, had I had any. We don't know these things, but had I had children, I would have loved them. And they would have loved me back, and they would have been a support system and a family. And I would have been able to be proud to be able to say, I would be proud to say that I'm a grandma, and, and, and uh, life would go on, and I'd have a support system and be happy in life. And I'd be up to date with everything that's going on, because your grandchildren bring you up to date with all the latest things happening. And you have more fun in life, because these kids are there to remind you of what's happening. I'm missing that. I miss that. Well, I still feel that it was unfortunate that I faced being sterilized. Uh, it would have been nice to have had a family um, because we have no grandchildren to carry on our lives. And uh, yes, I do have, per se, grandchildren because I have a lot of friends who have children and they just love me just because. And uh, everybody adopts old Jude in the neighborhood. It's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I kind of like that. Gary likes it too. We have fun with the kids. And, you know, I try to say to Judy every day, I love you very much, and I appreciate you very much. I really think mm -hmm. our marriage is absolutely uh, terrific. We work at communicating, that's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after 31 years, I think that's a statement to the world. We met each other at Central, at the Central Pentecostal Church. And we sang in a choir weekly, and we sang in the singing Christmas tree for 32 years. I did, Gary didn't. He did four trees. And that was a big event in our life for many, many years. I met my wife in a church choir, the Central Pentecostal Tabernacle Church Choir. I had uh, recently moved back to Edmonton in 1979, and so in September of 79, when I joined the choir, that's how I first met my wife. My very favorite memory is when we did, did a lovely boat cruise to Alaska. We were newly married. We got married in February 19th of 82. And in September of 84, September 1st to be specific, mm -hmm. we did a beautiful cruise to Alaska and mm -hmm. we just fell in love with Alaska. Mm -hmm. We uh, had different ports of call. One port of call was St. Petersburg, which was just like a Norwegian village and then we went as far north as Skagway and we love Skagway. He chased me for two years and on my first date I had a girlfriend that came along with us to a movie. <laughs> Poor she Alma. sat in between us Alma sat as in between. we watched this movie. <laughs> we still laugh about that today. That was hilarious but uh, we don't need her around anymore. We've got the best marriage in the world as far as we're concerned. And we're very happy. She's my sweet little moccasin. That's my um, nickname I call her. And I'm her running brave. And honey bear. <laughs>
I'd go in there though and feed her, talk to her, and yeah. Even if she couldn't understand, you still there's still a human being. That's right. <laughs>